What's up, it's Love Dorsey, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bastard. Sick of the shit when I ain't around, you got a lot to say. If you gon' tell the fucking story, tell it the right way. Sick of the shit. Yes, sir. All right, y'all, we right back at it. We got the one and only Love Dorsey jumping off the porch with us today. What's up with you? Shit, chilling. Glad to be back. It's good to see y'all again. Word. That's what's up. That's what's up. Nah, definitely great to see you. How you been feeling though? Man, good. I've been working, hustling, fucking doing what I do. Yeah. Ruffling the internet, triggering people. Yo, for <laughs> real. Like, I mean, shit, since the last time you was here on the porch, I mean, you didn't shit took the internet by storm and went viral a bunch of times like got Always. folks talking that chatter crazy Always. yo but let me um also start by asking you how's your mental health these days now you know what i appreciate you asking me that and it's good you know based on what i teach my brand what i stand for I'm always checking up on that. Word. That's that's first before the physical. Yeah, nah, for sure. And you know, like the person who's in the shoes of, you know, delivering the message and you know being the person to always help other people with their problems. A lot of times, it's easy for people to not ask you how you right. doing or not ask you, you know that. So, They'll never check up on the strong. People. Yo, I'm telling you <laughs> for real. But shit, a lot of times, I mean, a lot of times, shit, that, that, that strong person, they they got they counsel and they person yep. that you know what I'm saying. Help yeah, because you know, you everybody go through shit. So the same way, you know, I teach and counsel and help people through their shit. I go through my shit too. Yeah. But I, you know, I know enough to check up on. Like I said, I check on my mental health before the physical like yeah. you know what i mean like that's if the mind ain't right it don't even matter how you look in the physical right that shit carry over to everything nah, it controls sure. everything it's the head of everything yeah no nah, for sure so so do you do you truly practice what you preach you absolutely know? you got to and, that, and that's what i'm saying like in order to continue to do what i do um you know stay true and and real to the topics that i talk about yeah. i gotta make sure i'm in a good space i say this all the time like my platform especially like on instagram and facebook it is well beyond me as the individual being, meaning like it has grew to a point where people use that platform, those pages for therapy. They use it to be able to get their mind right, you know, manage their emotions, yeah. take a look at their traumas, their generational curses. So if I'm on that motherfucker talking about, you know, just emotional shit that matters to me in my own personal life, yeah. it would be doing the page a disservice, the, yeah. the entire brand I built. No, nah, for sure. I saw um, I saw somewhere where you were talking about how people was getting mad when you was like disabling your Facebook page yeah. or, you know, what I'm saying because because it was like they true like place to yeah. for therapy and for refuge. Yep, yeah, that's still a thing. Like if I if I were to ever deactivate or just, you know, take the content off the page, even just for a day. it And this is really what showed me how responsible I need to be with my platform. Yeah. Because if I take that bitch down, people, wait a minute, wait, I watch, I binge watch your videos, like, this keep me from doing this. And it's male and female. Yeah. Like, women talk about how my content has helped them change for the better, move differently with parenting their children, relationships, mm -hmm. life. And then men talk about how watching my content has helped them realize a lot of stuff about themselves, their mental health, their upbringing, treating women different, treating themselves better, just, yeah. you know, looking at the real shit. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Now, a lot of your content uh, is controversial, even on the tip of where you have a lot of women who get upset at you about yeah. your content because you speak to the men in a way of giving us game on how to not get duped, yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, basically, um, you know, by, by women. But then also talking about, you know, women like, uh, and, and, and the subject of accountability, yep. you know what I'm saying, which is like really uh, sensitive, you know, right now. It's, it's a... It's a trigger for women. Yeah. Like if you start talking about accountability, if you have, cause you know, I have live videos and you know, reels I posted where I'm, I'm just talking to the men. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving them game on certain stuff about us as women. And it, it always trickles back to helping us mm -hmm. in tune like females. But when you're not woke, you know, that third eye ain't open. You don't really see it that way. You see yeah. it like, oh, she for the dudes or what's the verbiage that they use? Oh, she'll pick me. Right, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. They think I'm just talking just to appeal to dudes, but yeah. my content really breaks generational curses. Like I speak on stuff that if we start really putting this to the forefront of our conversations, mm -hmm. it'll change the dynamic on how we treat one another, how we're raising our children, how we look at ourselves in mm -hmm. regards to how we apply ourselves and focus on certain stuff in our life. Like it's a big deal, but females do they get upset. Nah, for sure. And speaking of like breaking generational curses, um, a lot of the things that you are talking about is, you know, 
like in terms of like men growing up in the house only being raised by a woman yes. and like the ways that that affects yes. us and, and our ooh, emotions. They hate. And, I just had to, um, I had to delete a comment off my page. And, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, when people trigger, you can just see it. They mm -hmm. can't see it, but you can see it because they go on and on in their comments and in their dialogue with yeah. stuff that you never even said. But when I talk about this whole single mothering mm -hmm. pandemic that we in, mm -hmm. and you know, I, I understand history and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll touch on that a little bit, but when I go to talking about this and how it produces the worst product, ooh, everybody just starts trying to defend their personal single mom. Right, and it's right. like, if you look at the bigger picture, statistically, it is a fact, regardless of how many ways you try to discredit or chop down the statistics. If you just look around your neighborhoods, your low income areas, areas where it's predominantly, you know, us, yep. right? You mm -hmm. can see the outcome of the fucking, pro you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can see the shit that's going on. Yeah, no, so it just, sure. when I talk about that, it, you know, it's, it's highly triggering for women. It's a, it's a particular subject that like, people damn near wanna fight by. Yeah. But in a nutshell, we produce the worst product. Yeah. Women parenting children by themselves mm -hmm. with no positive male role models in the household, no consistent male figures, it produces the worst product. Yeah. It is, you know, a, a big blame for a lot of young men mm -hmm. going straight to prison, mm -hmm. fresh out of their teens, straight into the prison system. Yeah. It is a big part of the blame for how a lot of our youth are doing in school. Yeah. Because in order to learn, you gotta be able to manage your emotions, you gotta be able to focus, you gotta be able to get out of playtime and out of worrying about what your mama said right. and getting out into the world and getting a sense of your social skills, a sense of self, things like this. And you know, they just don't wanna hear it, but yeah. it's a fact. No, for sure, because a lot of times for us black men, the first time that we even get authority from a man Come on. is from the police. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or from an authority figure that you don't even know, so you don't know how to respect them, you yep. know, or anything. So a lot of times cats will crash out because either is a scenario where shit, a nigga like in the streets then, you know, crossed them or, yep. or then said something crazy to them and they don't know how to react yep. to that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, usually the, the, the number one place to go is emotional. That's, you know and, I mean? and I'm gonna tell you something, when, and I say this all the time, and again, trigger warning, because people just get mad. They go straight into the space yeah. or try to defend their single mother. But in a, as a whole, our people, we are suffering greatly by us just thinking we're doing it the right way, yeah. right? And when you, when you talk about what you just said, being raised for all your early 17, 18 years, right. and you're only seeing how a woman runs the house, right. how a woman handles things when conflict comes up, yeah. how a woman is with her emotions. You're never allowed any influence from yeah. a male, yeah. whether it's your father or anybody that has consistent say so over you, you grow up as a man with bitch ways, yeah. womanly ways. Yep. And it's something that, you know, even men get triggered because they think about, okay, I was raised by a single mother, but I ain't no bitch. Unless you got out right. in the world and you got around men and you rubbed elbows with grown men doing right. some positive shit, you have some female rays. You have some tendencies and some psychological things going on that yeah. associate more with the woman than they do with the man. Yeah, no, for sure. And, and those are facts, like yeah. science-wise, you know, psychology-wise, it's just something you can't argue with. And, and, you know, I see it all the time on my page. People get in the comments yeah. and they try to argue, but I'm just like, po baby, you just don't yeah. know. No, nah, because it, it definitely triggers on both sides for the women defending themselves on how they're raising these boys. Yep. And then as a man, I mean, shit, you don't want to hear anything saying that you're anything less than being a, a man. man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Um, so something that was interesting for me where I came to the realization with this, my therapist broke it down for me. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up single single parent mom raised me mm -hmm. but then i happened to have my, my granddaddy helped raise me too and i there was like go. really close to him so i was breaking down some scenarios to my therapist like a couple of different scenarios i was going through with some folks and after i broke them down she asked me she said how would your granddaddy have handled yep. those scenarios yep. And I answered it, and it was different from how I handled because you the was scenarios. doing what your mama would do. Exactly, you, it's 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 indisputable facts, and <laughs> yeah. it's sad I have to say indisputable in front of the yeah. word facts, but it's just it's true. 
as human beings, the way we develop, if anybody that has ever worked with children, they know we model, right. we pick up, we get our program and our paradigms, our beliefs, our inner beliefs on how we behave. Because what you know don't control how you act. Right. It's your actual beliefs that are programmed into you. Right. And when all you've seen is a female running stuff, and you gotta think about it, nowadays it's households full of nothing but women. Right. The mama being told how to be a single independent mama by her mama. Yeah. Her mama don't got no man, but she got some sisters and some aunties. Yeah. They all run the family. These are wow. the opinion leaders. They make all the decisions. And then you got two, three, four, five young teen boys being raised by them. Literally my scenario, Yes, and it gets family. to a point where <laughs> it's like, how long are we gonna keep pretending like this shit makes sense? Right. And then, you know, like I said earlier, I'm gonna touch on it a little bit, and this bothers a lot of people, but I gotta say, I understand a lot about history and where our people come from. Mm -hmm. When you don't understand that there was an agenda to economically castrate black men, to separate our households, to make it where welfare programs actually solicited mm -hmm. and was lustful looking to women as long as they kept the men away. Well, you don't understand that this is where this shit stems right, from. Right. And this is just a part of it, but this is where it stems from. You'll, when you don't understand this, you will think that as a single mother, I made the decision to raise my children by myself. Like I made that conscious choice. No, you didn't. It was programmed and your mama was programmed and anybody before you that did this from a happy space, like this is the thing to do, bragging about it, advising other women under them that girl, keep your baby. It don't matter if he around, you could do it by yourself. Y'all, y'all don't understand you psychologically programmed because in the late 1960s, early 1970s, there were governmental programs that were put in place for welfare. It was mm -hmm. put out there that this was welfare. Yeah. This was to help low income and poor families, mostly us, yeah. right? Yeah. And so when these programs came about, they made it where you get food stamps, cash assistance, housing, all these things. Yeah. But one of the main stipulations was you cannot have a male in the household. Right. Right. Yeah. The other part of it is they would send around social workers, which some people know this still goes on today. Mm -hmm. But when these programs first started, this is one of the main things. Social workers would come out after they giving you these benefits to make sure you don't have no man in the household. Right. Yeah. And so the idea is if you if you if you mix the crack epidemic, you mix where we were coming from, from like the industrial revolution and the deindustrialization, like just if you can go through history and just educate yourself, you will see where. Wait a minute. We not just doing right. this and making these decisions to have these babies by ourselves because this is something that we thought about, thought it through, looked at the product, it's producing a good result. We are psychologically manipulated yeah. and programmed to believe that this makes sense. Yeah, nah. And this is why every time I try to have real conversations about this shit, it triggers people to the point where they will talk about everything but the shit I'm saying, right. the root of it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Cause nah, it, it definitely, triggers like pulls a lot of triggers mm. and I know about a lot about that too because my mom's used to work for WIC yeah. you know Come women on. infant children yep. you know what I mean so like and you she's always talk about like how those programs were just set up like to keep people you know stuck I mean yep. it was you know fortunate that folks had it yep. to be able to get you know what I'm saying the formula and all that type stuff but all of this is like all I mean, you know, like like any any good conspiracy theorist or whatever we all you know, we all know, like this is all a part of that diabolical. Right. Plan. But if you I'm going to tell you something, you there is conspiracy theorists and in, 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 you know, us thinking that certain things are going on. And then there is the stuff like what we talk about right now, where there is solid proof. Right. We're right. we're the living examples of what that type of shit does. Mm -hmm. And then, and then when you look at outside of that, when you look at how, if you try to have a conversation with people nowadays about co-parenting, mm -hmm. about how rights have changed for women mm -hmm. and we are able to be independent if you want to be or if that's the lifestyle that you choose, why are these programs still operating with the same rules? Mm -hmm. Because back when they first started, women, we didn't have as many rights as we have now. Right. Our rights have progressed. Why do you still have it where we can only get this help without a man when, especially for our people, women are participating, black men, women participate more in the labor force than black men. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? We're, yeah. we're advancing 
Shit is going on where it's different. So even if you try to go into the conspiracy area, you still can't make it make sense as to why are the rules still the same on getting this assistance and these governmental programs? Why do I have to X my baby daddy out, the father out of the picture, whether we together or not? Why does it have to be just me by myself making under a certain amount to get these programs? It just shows that it did what it was supposed to do. It programmed our mindset to believe that this is the way to go. Right. So now we're defending single motherhood as older women. You see them telling younger women and encouraging their younger family members like, girl, if you don't want that baby with you, you can just have it. You will be all right. right. We'll help you. Right. I mean, and then when you look at what's happening with our young boys, it's not working. Yeah. It's not the lessons that we think we teach niggas by keeping children that they don't want, that they're not prepared to be in a household and lead and help take care of. It's not it's teaching us and the children more lessons than it's teaching them. Yeah. Nah, that's real. That's real. Yo, like, let, let's tap into some of the music stuff. Um, so you dropped the album, um, The Breakup. Yep. And what was interesting about that was that it was like, I mean, the album like sequenced in a way, it was almost like a musical. Like yep. it could have been a musical, you know what I mean? Like it went through like a, a huge roller coaster of emotions yep. from starting out talking about, you know, a game that your moms gave you to you know, and flags to look out for yep. all the way through, you know, getting with the guy, leaving them and getting back with them. You know what I mean? Like all the true emotions that, you know, are, are that we really feel like right. in these relationships and in some of these toxic relationships, because you tapped into that yep. too. Like. Yep. It's, it's, I feel like, because I'm an artist, right? So I feel like, you know, everything that is me, I want to put it into music. So I come from the street, so I can get street with the music, which my first um, take, I Am Love Dorsey, it was more of that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it grew into, okay, let me show what I know. Let me give an album that is more like my brand that people know me for um, in regards to my content online as an influencer. Let me get into the therapy. Yeah. So that, you know, the feedback I get from the album, The Breakup, is this is a therapy album. Like yeah, I could sure. put this on as I'm going through shit and it's gonna be a song on that that's gonna hit mm -hmm. with the mood I'm in. Mm -hmm. From relationships and being kept a secret. Cause you know, now with the internet nowadays, it's like people worry about that. You gonna post me if you don't post right. me and you trying to just do it off the internet. Are you hiding something? Right. You, if I post you, is a bunch of people gonna come out the woodworks? Yeah. You know, I got songs on a song on there about that. Toxic, just being in that relationship where you're going mm -hmm. round in circles. Like we, mm -hmm. we arguing, fighting, we knowing this ain't going nowhere, well, but the lust is strong, we soul tied. You know, I got that particular song. Then I even go into just, you know, the, the mindset of us as a female as we go through our different emotions. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like we need to tap into that and be real with ourselves. Some shit we gotta be accountable for. It's yeah. on us with these relationships. Like niggas do be lying. They do be doing some bullshit, yeah. but we be playing along with the bullshit in this imaginary space. Huh. Like we don't know what the fuck going on and we know what's going on. Yeah. Now two songs on the project that was really interesting to me, uh, Revenge of the Bay and Even. Yes. And those tap into a subject that's like really sensitive for us men yeah. because like you basically talk about, you know, dealing with, you know, the shit from a nigga and him cheating yep. on you and, and, and you catching him a bunch of times. Yep. But then like the one time you go out and do your thing and you know what I'm saying, now he gone and he out, you know yeah. what I mean? I wanna ask you, you know, cause that's, a, that's something that's really sensitive with mm -hmm. men. Like when we get cheated on, I mean, that hit our ego so hard and, and we damn near out, but yep. women will tolerate that more, yeah. more than us. And so it's like, okay, so on the song, I speak on how, you know, nigga cheated four, five times. Yeah. I cheated once, but you know, that dynamic, Cause it's a, it, you know, it's a double standard. Mm -hmm. Like men can't tolerate what women tolerate right. when we get into that toxic shit. Right. So it's like, yo, fold to my one nigga, technically we even, but niggas will still leave. Like when the song over, you know, I got dialogue in between every song right, yeah. on that tape, mm -hmm. you know, the dialogue at the end, it's niggas like they leave, like they check yeah. them. Y'all check out yeah. one time. Y'all check the fuck out, out of which I understand the psyche <laughs> behind it, but women, we will, put up with a lot. And I feel like it's, it has to do with the history of where we come from with relationships. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's more of us being the victim. So it's like, it's not that bad. It's, it's the stigma we've been going along with as women. Yeah. Like we'll, we'll tolerate. We get more and more in that space of being independent, but because I do, this, this is the thing, I'm an artist, right? But then I do therapy behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I do the one-on-one -on -one phone calls where people pay to speak to me to get life advice, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I know on Front Street, a lot of us as women, we boss ass bitches, we look good, we building brands, we got businesses and shit, but we still putting up with niggas cheating. Yeah. Like when, when a bitch get on the phone, like, oh, you look at her page or her profile, you would never think like, nah, he cheat on her, she leaving. Huh. But when I get on the phone, we, we, we sticking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So y'all, <laughs> so y'all talk that shit, but y'all, y'all go. Right. Tire. Yeah. And why, and why do you, why do you think though, that like women will tolerate so much more like than a man? Like, I'm a, I'm a, so I'm gonna be brutally honest with you and the ladies that may watch this. <laughs> when we get with dudes, we be knowing what y'all are. Meaning like we know clearly the same flaws that y'all know y'all got, yeah. that you won't speak on, that's hid mm -hmm. behind your ego or the designer or the car or you know, the dick, whatever, mm -hmm. right? We yeah. be knowing. So a lot of times a bitch be knowing up front, this dude got these kind of tendencies, mm -hmm. but we want a relationship image so bad, mm -hmm. right? That we will go along with that. And then if you mix the self-esteem issues, the lack of a father figure in our childhood for a lot of us as women, we, when you don't have that growing up, there's something in you as a female, and this is just a part of femininity, that you long for that masculine companionship. Yeah. So a lot of times we can see all up and down, this nigga is never gonna live up to what I want him to be, but God damn, it feels so good as we connect, as we fuck, as I am able to say this my people's, yeah. this is something I didn't get. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 no, I can dig it. I can dig it. Now, let me ask you this. Um, do you ever, you know, like you, you've gotten more recognized from speaking and from, you know, like all of the therapy and the sessions and things like that, that you, you know, that you do. Like when you were first starting out and, 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 and you know, aspiring to be an artist, like did you expect for your point of view and, and, and you speaking to actually like, you know, push past your art? You know what I mean? I, so to be honest with you, I did because I know what I am, mm -hmm. right? And, and when I say that, what I mean is I am an artist, but I'm also, if, if I go back to my upbringing, I was raised with, you know, both parents in my life. You know, my family is headed by men. Um, I was a nerd growing up in school, uh -huh. meaning like I wasn't the one that was out there with boyfriends in middle school or even mm -hmm. the late years in high school. So for me, I read a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to information. I'm an autodidact, like I'm big on, teaching myself things that are bigger than what my family knows. So for me, I know that while there's a lot of creativity, there's a lot of artistry within me, there's a lot of intellect, there's a lot of perspective, there is a lot of um, what's missing mm -hmm. in our community. So for me, it's, it's, I knew that people would want to hear my music, but they would also want to hear me talk that real shit mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can dig it, I can dig it. And let me ask you this, um, so in terms of, all right, how do I want to ask this? So I know that like you, you've been in a relationship for some years, mm -hmm. you're, you're engaged, um, planning to get married soon, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, a lot, so another scenario or another issue between men and women, I think are when us men are dealing with women who are in their masculine energy. Yeah. And so in the most respectful way to say it, I mean, I think like women, like as entrepreneurs, as bosses, you know, all of that, like you have to be tapped into that masculine energy. Yeah. But then I want to ask you, how do you then balance it out to also tap into your feminine energy and make sure that you're giving your man what he needs to still be able to feel like a man, but then also, you know, you maintain like who you are and you know what I mean? Like your whole. Right. I'm going to say this, right? It, it, it starts with your programming. Your programming is your upbringing, and then after your programming, it's your life experiences that determine how you are. For females, when you are raised and programmed as a child that men have a certain authority and power and value, mm -hmm. right? There is a certain part of you that the femininity comes out automatically when it is men in general, especially a man that you respect and you love and that you're taking on a relationship with. Mm -hmm. So for me, the dynamic comes out natural around my man. So when I'm on my platform, when I'm doing my music, when I'm doing my boss female shit, that is that. Mm -hmm. When I'm with him, it is a whole nother realm mm -hmm. and it's programmed into me. It is something that, again, it comes from my upbringing. I was raised with a father in my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I ain't never really been out here looking for um, fulfillment or my, that little girl in me gotcha. isn't going through the world looking for a certain lock-in with a man for the wrong reasons or yeah. to dominate a man to make myself 
you know, feel better. Yeah. It just comes natural. And you know, I tell this to women when I do Zooms and stuff on femininity, you have to understand that in order to attract the man that matches you being in your feminine space mm -hmm. at all times in regards to your family life, you have to understand it starts with you and if you're tapped into your true self. Because right. a lot of what's going on with us, it goes back to the same thing I said about us as single mothers parenting. Right. When you yeah. raised by nothing but women, right? It feels so uncomfortable to have a man exert any sort of authority or control over you. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of women that they struggle to build relationships with decent men, mm -hmm. mature men, good men, men that lead, men that work, men that make decisions for their household. They can't shut up. Yeah. They can't get into that woman space around this man because guess what? I'm only used to seeing my mama run shit. Right. I'm only used to my aunties, my mama, my grandmas and them running shit. I'm watching them handle my older brothers, my younger brothers. I'm watching my uncle go to my grandma. Mom, you could do this. I'm watching the effects of single mothering and I'm modeling it. It's programmed. Yeah. So when I do run across a man in a relationship, even if I wanted to work with this guy, that shit gon' that independent shit is going to come out like a disease yeah. until you intentionally attack it and change that shit by changing your program, your programming through repetition. Yeah. Yeah. So if we caught you uh, catch a phone call like from your man, you're going to be, be a soft. different dynamic. You're going to be a whole it's, different. It's funny, be, it's funny you said that because <laughs> me and him have a, um, a social media page on Instagram um, is Pasta Times Love Dorsey. And on the page, like a lot of people watch the videos and they DM or they comment mm -hmm. and they talk about how it's like I'm different. Like they see a whole, they expecting to see videos where I'm on there yeah. talking my shit, loud, aggressive, and the, they can see the dynamic <laughs> change. Like we used to do lives and stuff together yeah. and they can just, same thing you pointing out, yeah. they can see it. Nah, that's what's up. And I hope I worded that right. I hope they don't go crazy on no, me in the comments I, the way that I was worded. No, that like, it, listen, what, I, I like what you're asking because we don't talk about this kind of shit right, enough. Right. Like there, there is a thing with women and we need to talk about it, right? Because I do Zooms on it where we got all these rights that women did not have. Mm -hmm. We got all this room to grow and be real bosses. Mm -hmm. We're out earning a lot of men. The concept of single mothering, it empowers us in our journey to be something in life more than it empowers men, if you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like if you take a boy coming from a single mother household and a girl, a mother that's hardcore on that independent shit, it's going to empower her daughter mm. to be independent. It's going to cripple her son in a certain way. Mm. So when we're trying to date as these boss women, whether you got hair brands or businesses or you know a platform like mine or you on these TV shows and shit like that, we need to have conversations about the balance. Yeah. There is, here is how I am at work and with my business and with my brand, and then here is how I need to be with my man. We need to ask the questions brutally like you asked no, it more often. For sure, because a lot of times, like, guys are want, like, a, a, a woman who's, like, hella ambitious yep. and, you know, all of that. But then the turn off is, yep. damn, fam, she don't know how to turn that shit off. off. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, she don't know how to be a woman when I need her to be a woman. She's yes. still a pit bull when yes. we at the house. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, it's, and this is, like, all, even what you're saying, it is the effects of the shit I talked about from our history. We yeah. need to discuss it. Sure. Like men and women need to sit down and have conversations about, bro, I love that boss shit. I love that you, you know, you went and got your body done. You got your business going on. You're doing this with your children, but I don't feel like a man mm -hmm. in a house with you. Like you more like the man, you know what yeah. I mean? We need to have these conversations and women, we need to be honest. I, I understand that. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. And it's a struggle for me to turn it off. Like we need to start saying that so we can start supporting one another on the real shit. Yeah, no, for sure. Because I mean, most men don't express their emotions because mm -hmm. most of the time when we do express our emotions, we're looked at as soft and then we get emasculated, was it demascu emas emasculated, emasculated yep. you know what I'm saying? Oh, he, oh, oh, he gay, he must want yep. men, oh, he must want... And it's like, yep. yo, like, I'm just telling you that I just was not feeling the way that you said something to yep. me or, you know what I mean? Yep, I 100%, I get exactly what you're saying. I just recently posted a video, um, posted a video on my Instagram and I was talking about how for young boys, you get to a certain age and again, it ain't, like I said on the video, it's not a certain numerical age. It is, there is something that happens in y'all upbringing through mm. pu puberty or you, you know, going through your little adolescent stage where y'all realize I'm a man. And then you realize what the world expect men to be. Yeah. And then you realize I'm being raised by a woman. And then you realize like there is this thing with my ego where I don't like being fussed at from a space of disappointing a woman. Yeah. Cause men don't like to disappoint a woman right. they care about, right? Mm -hmm. But from a single mother space, we fuss a lot at boys. 
and it cripples the fuck out of y'all's psyche in regards to the emotional side. So a lot of times men don't realize they go and repeat the same by picking a woman that handles them or fusses at them or deals with them a certain way and they shut down. Yeah. I talked to a lot of mothers of teenage boys and these dudes, like they can't get their son to open up and really talk to them. They walk around with their hoodies on in 90 degree weather, just kind of sticking to themselves, listening to the music. And that's what's beginning to raise their mindset. Cause it's like, there's nothing in here reflective of helping me become a man. I know this, but right. in the black community, you can't even say that to your mama. Right. You a damn near get called disrespectful. But I know it's something missing here. I can't really say it to her. She doing the best that she can. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she almost sensitive and triggered about anything mm -hmm. I bring up that I need that she can't give me. So you kind of, you know, you, you suppress it. Yeah. Then now you're a grown man. And let's say you come across a good woman and she's trying to get you to open up, you know, express your feelings and shit like that. You don't know if you're going or coming and when you do open up and come out like a bitch. Huh. That's real. Yeah. Yeah. Because it come across, it come out so emotional. Yeah. Because that's all that you've been used to. It's interesting when you was just talking about that. It, it makes me think about like that point in time becoming a man like where I remember getting like my last ass whooping mm -hmm. and that belt came swinging and I you grabbed caught that it. Bitch. You know Come what on. I'm saying? And, 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 and that was that point where, you know, me and mom's eye contact came yes. together and she realized like, oh, he a this man. This is a grown man. You know what I mean? And, and, and honestly, like, it's funny because I talked about this earlier um, in a discussion I was having. You know, you, you take a lot of these young teenagers and stuff like that. They're fully developed height, build and everything yeah. by 15, 16 yeah. years old. Yeah. And then you just fussing at them. You just fussing at them. Right. You, and I ain't saying they ain't fucking up. Mm -hmm. I ain't even saying that. But m men should have been, came into the picture and took over with influence. Yeah. The problem and the reason why, like I'll go back to what I said about the statistics, as single mothers, we produce the worst product is because at some point we have to pass the torch over to men. Yeah. And back in the day, this was understood. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get to a certain age, mama sending you out to go cut grass with Mr. Earl down the street. They got the lawn service yeah. or they take your ass up to the barbershop after school to go to Mr. Dave's barbershop and sweep yeah. up hair and listen to men. They understood. Let me get some men influencing you. That shit is missing and even educators tell me all the time because I get DMs, I connect with people that work in the school system and they talk about how, you know, as, as single mothers, it's a, a triggering space for us to hear about the shortcomings socially and intellectually in our children. So you can't tell them shit. Mm. We don't want to hear shit about our babies. So when somebody tell you, hey, your son is playing this, this and this, oh, yeah. it's like you damn near offending them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Instead of them getting that information and moving on it and getting with the guidance counselor. So now it's like a block put up where can't nobody influence the children but them. We got to start admitting we don't yeah. have enough tools and skills as women to make no fucking man a man. He got to yeah. get that from men. So you got to get mentors. You got to get them in programs, get them in groups and social circles where men are able to tell them something without you putting your womanly influence or two cents on it. Right. That's real. That's just like, you know, the, the I feel like the thought process of like it takes a village yes. to, to raise one. Like, I feel like that's kind of out the window these days. Yeah. Because Nobody wants you to tell their kid shit. And yeah. I'm going to tell you something else. It. I teach that it takes a village, but what I call it is resources. You need people, places, things, environments that are supportive of you producing a good product mm -hmm. with your child, right? This means that you need to, if you are a single mother, get out in the community and find resources for your fucking children that are men. Yeah. Positive male role, and it's going to get uncomfortable because if you ain't have it, it feels uncomfortable to go to men and ask for help, but you need it. Your children need it for them not to be another fucking statistic. Right, right. Now you've been releasing eBooks uh, mm -hmm. recently. Um, what was it? Uh, the four, th there was a four page one that I-, I Yep, so I, I got my management of emotions. Um, yes. It's a mini e-guide. It's, it's designed for you to keep in your mobile device yeah. or your phone. And it has all the beginning steps for you to start as an adult or a young adult learning to manage your emotions. Yeah. Because this is part of the reason why when you come from a single mother household and you struggle with the emotional part, it will directly correlate with you going to prison, not because, oh, your mother's raising you to go to prison, but most of our men, black men, they go to prison for mismanagement of emotions. Yeah. Thinking things are bigger than what it is because it feels bigger than what it actually is, unable to weigh the facts with reality, unable to look at the situation and make decisions based on conflict resolution, being able to manage yourself. And there's this accountability thing where with our people, we love to say like, so-and-so made me do it. 
Like, if you wouldn't have did this, I wouldn't have did this. Right, yeah. Like, yeah. regardless of how any situation triggered you to feel, mm -hmm. you still in response. You are yeah. responsible for your actions I've caught behind it. We don't like that. I don't know why we don't like to admit that. Yeah. <laughs> people don't like to take the responsibility. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's, it's tough for people to take that responsibility. Like, I did this shit, or, I, or I'm the reason why, you know, these outcomes are what they are. Yeah. Um, one part that you, uh, and, and that, and that four-part guy um, that, like, really stood out to me was um, intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. um, just talking about, like, actually, like, having motivation, like, past, like, yeah. a monetary um, value or past receiving something yes. monetarily. Yes. Like, I mean, because that's, like, that's like the true uh, basis of discipline. Yep. You know what I mean? Like being able to get yourself to wake up every morning at a certain time, get yourself to write things down, yep. get yourself to, you know, repeat certain things. Yep. I mean, it's like in the beginning, you don't know, or you might not see the results, even lifting weights or doing push-ups or some yep. shit. You know what I mean? You don't see the results in the beginning, but you doing it knowing that, hey, down the line, these things are going to you know, it's, it, you, it, uh, it's funny you said that because, you know, I talk about it's all about tolerance. Like in, in life, you're going to tolerate and go through shit. Right. When you get to a level where that third eye opens and you understand how this shit works, you will intentionally tolerate stuff based on trying to get somewhere. Mm. So, for example, if you're trying to get the abs or the cut arms or the build or, you know, whatever physique. You're intentionally tolerating the pain and the sweat and the stress of going to the gym, right. the trying to stay disciplined and consistent with doing it. You're intentionally tolerating that particular stress or, you know, negative field in order to gain something out of it. When you set your life up with goals and you tackle your day to day based on I'm intentionally going through certain shit mm -hmm. for a particular outcome it will lessen the amount of bullshit that you have to tolerate right. unintentionally. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because right. life going to throw shit at you and you're going to go through shit when you ain't focused. If you just decide what you're going to focus on, but you can't do this if you can't even manage yourself. Like in my e-guide, I talk about management of emotions is management of your thoughts, mm. right? If you can't manage what you think, you're not going to be able to manage your words or your actions. Right. And the idea is most of what we think, it comes from our environment and our inner beliefs. Your inner beliefs come from your upbringing, what was programmed into you, and then your environment is the space you're sitting in or that which you're still in from what your parents put you in. So and until you like decide I'm gonna take control of this, you'll be in this cycle. And like it's, it's a lot of moving parts that affect it, but okay, I have this conversation with people where, and, and it's very triggering, but I talk about how we in a space with co-parenting and, and this co-parenting term is getting so big because of the single parenting shit. Mm -hmm. We think that it's a good thing mm -hmm. to raise children by ourselves. So we're having more and more babies outside of marriage or outside of some sort of commitment where we both take on this responsibility of family right. as one, right? So we're having babies in a space where one person is really the only person in the situation a lot of times that mm -hmm. wanted mm -hmm. the child. We're not being honest about the situation in which the kids were born. And then you lay that on top of the unmanaged emotions and the childhood trauma, and it's just disaster. So what I mean is, and I say this often, women are the only beings that decide if someone's going to be born. It takes a man and a woman to make a baby, but a baby coming into this world is the sole choice of a female. So it's like these women and these family units that have multiple children, and it's just a female. When you see that you already pope, you already not disciplined. Like, let's just, I'm gonna just keep it real. You know you pope, you know you're not really disciplined. You know you come from a family that don't have generational wealth. You know you ain't planning no goals or got no big shit that you're working on. And you keep making this choice. Let's go past the unprotected sex part hmm. to just keep birthing these children. Mm -hmm. Then you're birthing them from men that you are not putting any thought into choosing. It's just all about feeling and lust. It's a cycle that we're repeating that it will stress you the fuck out. Hmm. And this is why I'm so big on stressing this point, because as women, we tan ourselves up while looking beautiful and all building businesses wow. in the home life. We tearing ourselves the fuck up, repeating the same shit hmm. like it makes sense. And then we think that we're teaching men some sort of lesson by saying like, oh, well, I'm going to keep this baby and raise him by myself and you're going to be on child support. Hmm. You get sending a check once a month and me doing 99 percent of the rest of the work. It's not fucking even. Really, the person that's getting the lesson is me and the fucking kids that's going to become a statistic or a product of a household with just me. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Most men, they moving on, getting new relationships, building businesses, 
fixing all the stuff that you chastise them about fixing and moving on with somebody else while you're dying inside in regards to relationships and family. Because right. we make it look good on the outside, but be going through it at home, just as a woman, feeling inadequate because like you don't want your family or like you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, and, right. and the shit starts with, you can't even get into the work on your self-esteem until you figure out how to manage your emotions. Huh. Damn, that's real. Because like a lot of times they'll, I mean, they'll have a kid to try to keep the dude. Yes, and then when y'all don't stay, like when we had that baby, it's like, okay, I'll tell you I'm pregnant. And then you like, okay, but love, I ain't in no space where I can take care of a baby right now. Like I don't, in the end, nutshell, you don't want it. And you offer to pay for the abortion. Hmm. Me, coming from a single mother household, my mama in my ear telling me, you don't need him, keep your baby, hmm. I'll help you raise it. Now, one thing about our community, right, we'll say a lot of shit we gonna help with until wow. it's time to do it. Like mama will help, but there's gonna be a certain point where she start chastising me to take care of my own fucking child, mm -hmm. right? At that moment when I'm getting less help, she ain't babysitting every time I wanna go out or do this, or hell, it could be school or anything. People are only gonna help to the extent in which they life allow. Right. So grandma only gonna do so much. This makes me more bitter and bitter about the fact that you didn't stay, right? Then you move on. I had this baby with the sole purpose to try to keep you here. And my mama made me feel like if I keep it, I'll be all right, cause she gonna help me. Right. It didn't make you stay. I'm watching you on the internet move on with another girl. You might be finna get married, you and your business. You ain't even gotta be wealthy or nothing, but you, let's say you got your CDLs, you working for a company, you on your consistent shit, you got a girlfriend, y'all posting this shit, I'm over here with the baby. Yeah. Now I look good, but now my mama getting on me about not being able to do so much with my child, that make me madder at you. Hmm. I'm watching y'all, now you can't get your son to meet that girl. Now I'm putting you on child support. Now it's all this bullshit, it's right. really bullshit. It's right. coming from my feelings. Ain't nobody doing nothing to me. Like this is the, the fucking aftermath of my choice of having a baby with somebody that didn't want a baby. Right. We not in the fucking 1940s no more where it was a time where women didn't have rights and men understood they have a duty to take care of the woman and the child. We in a day and age where women are out earning men at a big pace. Mm -hmm. So when, when these men that you fucking with are raised by single mothers and they see nothing but they mama, running a household with four, five kids. If I call you, baby daddy, you need help. It's hard, like bitch, you ain't doing nothing. And your mom, my mama did it with four of us and she was straight, you will be right. all right. right. And then bitch, I don't like your attitude anyway, you unpleasant and mm. I told you, I ain't want no fucking baby, mm. right? But you thought you was gonna make me. And then right. you telling yourself, watch this, we go in a space of I'm a victim. He doing this to me. My life look like this, the issues I'm having with my mama, the kid, just being a kid, kidding, like parenting is going on, like yeah. this shit make me mad at you. You know what I mean? And yeah. we don't admit as women that I'm bitter. We'll never say we're a bitter baby mama. Huh. We be bitter as fuck. I be mad watching you, even for the dudes that are involved with the child still, after they told the female they ain't want them, to see you pull up and get your son or your daughter and don't give no fucks about me, I'm human, that hurts. Damn, he got in the car with the jet, pulled off, and ain't say shit to me. Right. I done came to the door with some little shorts on. Mm. He ain't even looking twice. <laughs> you got jet and slid off. Next thing you know, you on the internet with my son and your girlfriend and y'all. Ooh, I want to kill your ass. Ooh, wait. <laughs> but we don't, you know, we ain't, this is stuff that, to be honest, where it's coming from, it's normal. Yeah, no, nah, It's not sure. that you abnormal for feeling right, like this. Right. It's that we need to have talks about this so we can get to the solutions on processing yeah. it and being better. Because then you got these kids that grow up and they hate their daddies because mama been in the house telling them that their daddy ain't shit. Yep. Or you hear mama arguing with daddy on the phone yep. about, you know what I'm saying, about something. So you just grow up thinking this man ain't shit, but this man just yep. been kind of forced into a circumstance. And listen, every Father's Day, I make a live video talking about get both sides of the story. So if you was raised by a single mother, regardless of the outcome, in order to have your balanced view, you need your mama's perspective and your daddy's perspective. Mm -hmm. They get so mad on Father's Day when I talk about this, huh. especially females. Because the thing is, as independent single mothers, we're controlling as fuck. Mm -hmm. And so if it's something you want to know about your dad, I tell you. You know what I mean? Even yeah. if I'm not going to say this, I'm going to tell you. So on, on one of my lives, like last year, I proposed the question, go to your mama and just tell her, you know, that, hey, I want to get my daddy's side of the story on a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that I went through growing up that we still going through. I want to ask him some questions. Mm -hmm. So when I'm older and I'm outside of your house, I want to have a conversation with him. Most mamas, independent minded mothers are gonna try to ask you what questions you wanna ask your daddy and then they're gonna proceed to try to give you the answers in an effort to get you to not talk to him. Hmm. Because 
there's a dynamic to where a lot of that shit that your mama was feeding you, it wasn't fact, it was feelings. Mm -hmm. It was her experience with him that had nothing to do with you and it X'd out any of his viewpoint, mm -hmm. which from the female space, they feel like it don't matter, but it's so relevant because a lot of boys repeat the cycles of their fathers and without wanting to, yeah. they repeat it because they didn't go get educated on what the fuck was going on so I can make better choices than what my dad did. Yeah. And we, we shelter in our community from that. Like you, you probably don't even know no grown men that was raised by a single mother that was able to have that talk with their father and ask them real quick. It's not a lot of them. No, no. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely not. I, I got a newfound relationship with my pops like maybe about seven years, about seven years now. And he and I were able to sit down and have a real convo, but it was, this was, well, first of all, this was before I ever did therapy. So this was before I was even in any type of healing process. Mm -hmm. So I really didn't know how to accept some of the things that he was sharing with me. Mm -hmm. Even, and, and now when I think about it, I can more accept it, more understand it. Mm -hmm. Cause he was coming to me man to man. Yep. Like, hey, I've been in scenari scenarios like this where I've had, where I raised a kid, thought that he was my kid, it found out 10 years later or so that he wasn't my kid. So when you came around, the way you, me and your mama ended, yeah. I thought it was the same way with you. Yep. Now, being in an emotional state at the time of hearing that, I remember just going crazy. Yeah. Like, fuck you me, yeah. like, you my pops. I look yeah. just like you, you know yep. what I mean? But, you know, like just, but. It's so, it's so, it's, it's so funny to me, like, Okay, I know you know like shows like The Maury Show, yeah, yeah, Divorce so, Court, oh, yeah. and you know they play the episodes on the internet now yeah. where there are a lot of cases, a lot. This is like, when I'm saying a lot, I'm really putting emphasis on this. Yeah. There are a lot of scenarios where as women, we lie about paternity. Hmm. We be dead ass wrong, we yeah. be lying. We done fucked you, fucked you, got pregnant. It might've been after we broke up, so maybe I ain't cheating fuck, but yeah. I fucked you, fucked him. I know, even if I don't know which one of y'all the daddy, I know that I fucked both of y'all in a time frame yeah. that match up with like not knowing who the father is. Yeah. We'll just pick. And, and, and then and, there's and no I, accountability in it for what the fuck is doing to the child. This right. is just, take the dude out, take y'all out. We don't even give a fuck what it's going to do to the child. We just don't want to be seen as a hoe. We want to hide our flaws. Right. We want to run from accountability with sex. We want to make it seem like men are the only ones that are hypersexual mm -hmm. nowadays. But if you understand like what I talk about, mm -hmm. both men and women that are a product of where we come from, we be hypersexual on both ends. Yeah, that's real. And so it's a, it's, it's a, it is normal based on what is coming from. Yeah. If we have conversations from that space, we'll be able to be more real with one another. I mean, but, the folks is fucking and having kids. I mean, the woman have had to have wanted to have sex just as much as the dude. Yep. Had, you know what I mean? There's two people fucking. Like. But, but <laughs> see, when you, when you bring children into it, women, we want to be righteous, even right, when we don't right, know what right. the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Like I, I do some one-on-ones with women. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Hmm. Like, and I say this very respectfully, they will make up any reason to keep the child away from the father. And the, the blessing about being me is on a phone call, they're willing to genuinely listen and take, you know, my verbal triggering beating, so to speak, in that conversation per their request mm -hmm. and help and, and listen to me and receive it in to change their mindset. Yeah. But it's a lot of women, you could fart wrong as a dude. Oh, you ain't seen your son. Hmm. You, are you with that girl? Oh, no, your daughter can't come over there. Hmm. And we don't care that it's, it's psychologically, statistically proven, schools talk about it, that children coming from a two-parent household are a better product. Doesn't mean that every fucking product from a single mother household is bad, because if you get the community involved, you could actually do a good job. Yeah. But you are, are setting your child up to be a statistic as you parent based on ego and feelings. Hmm. We don't be knowing what the fuck we be doing a lot of the time. Right. And then because like y'all run, you know what I mean? We be, the child be left with us and we, we be all over the place. Yeah. And we just wing it until the end. And it's kind of like, if I get you through, if I get you through to high school, you get your, you know, your high school diploma, you know, you get a good job. I feel like, okay, good. But you fucked up psychologically, your social skills off, you hypersexual. You don't understand certain things about real life skills. Yeah. Like I, there are a lot of people I talk to when they got grown, they realized how much they missed, hmm. how much they were missing from their upbringing. Right, right. 
financial literacy, credit information, um, social skills to build yourself up enough to go out in the world and get uncomfortable for the right reasons, boundaries, how to set them, goals, how to set them, healthy eating, exercise, like these things weren't programmed. What was programmed was do what your mama say, right? right? Come in my house at a certain time, follow my fucking rules, don't talk back, yes ma'am, <laughs> yes sir, take your ass to school, your report card better be decent, right. don't be fucking in my house. Right. <laughs> and if you get that little girl pregnant, I ain't watching that baby all day long. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's about it. So I feel like we need to start being honest, male and female, parenting classes. Mm -hmm. We need to start being honest about, you know, what we're seeing with our children, mm -hmm. connecting with the educators, being real with them, because I'm telling you, every time I talk to a teacher, a guidance counselor, uh, somebody that is involved in extracurricular activities, dance coaches with kids, they talk about how you can see, especially in boys, mm -hmm. who's missing a daddy in the house and who's not. Yeah. You can see in girls, which this parent got a two parent household or involvement of two parents, these kids don't. You mm -hmm. can see it in the child's behavior, yeah. but it's so triggering to talk to the parents about this. They can't say shit, right, they get right. cussed out. Educators get cussed out. Yeah, because they just trying to, yeah, because I mean, as the parents, I mean, they embarrassed about their scenario. Yes. They just trying to get by and, and, and any, any critique is looked at like, oh, you talking down. On yeah, me. So. but we, if, we, if we're if we honest, if you really understand what I'm saying and embrace it, I don't need to feel shameful or feel like you talking down on me. What's happening with my children mathematically actually makes sense based on how I had them. Right. So if I birthed a child from a nigga that don't want the baby, we was never in nothing solid. When the product turns out the way it does, it actually makes sense. Hmm. So I'm not going to shuck and jive around talking about it. Yeah, I know my son got issues because he get all this emotional intelligence from me, a woman. Yeah. So I know he act like a little bitch sometimes, like, <laughs> what's your solutions? Yeah. What can I do to help my child? If you really love him, what can I do to pour back into him in the areas where I fucked up? Yeah. Ain't shit wrong with saying you fucked up. Nobody's perfect. We yeah, flawed. Niggas right. flawed and bitches flawed. Right. Parents flawed and children's flawed. Right. It's just keeping it real. Yeah, nah, that's real. Now you have daughters, right? Yes. And so how is it raising daughters, like especially in this climate where, I mean, within the culture, like, you know, everything is looked at or, or you know, a lot like the things that are glorified, the the you know the message that's glorified these days you know what i'm saying i mean it is it's difficult to raise a daughter in these times it is it, it is and you know one of the main things is i i am very vocal with my daughters about the real shit that's going on in the world the way that we are sexualizing the fuck out of ourselves the way that the music tells you to sexualize yourself the way that music tells you in the tv shows tells you to be violent against other women caddy um, you know, the way it tells you to make love and sex transactional. Mm -hmm. Like I have these real conversations. So, you know, my daughters can see it Yeah. at a very young age. They can see it. And from a parent's face, I'm big on educating. So my babies can read at age two. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I posted a video on my Instagram, my daughter, two years old, reading books. Mm -hmm. So I, I start them off young, working the fuck out of their brain. That way I can introduce to them as it gets introduced to them what's happening in the world. So what I mean by that is kids are four and five with tablets. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't give your kid a tablet or a phone, they're going to experience the internet at school or around friends. Right. So what I did was I made my kids work their brain from an advancement space because I know they're in an era where they're going to get information mm -hmm. faster than you and I did. And then from there, just having those conversations on a regular about boys, about sex, about girls, about what real friends look like. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, men deal with shit, but women, we deal with some shit in regards to trying to build just friendships with women. Yeah. We caddy with each other. We fake. We are groups of mean girls to other women. We body shame the fuck out of each other. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes on where if you don't teach your daughter how to get in that feminine space, you're a girl, you're a woman, mm -hmm. but also develop a sense of independence and some sort of stern handling for your environment, the world will eat you the fuck up even before getting involved with boys. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. For people with daughters, I know they know what I'm talking about because there's that we're emotional and intu intuitive by nature. Mm -hmm. And then when you mix in what's going on with today with the programming they're doing in kids, everybody want to just rap songs that have to do with fucking and transactional sex right, and right. you know what I mean? Just stuff that has nothing to do with being a woman of substance that men actually want to marry. Right. So I have to keep programming into my daughters like there is 
the fun girl and the look of this stuff. And then there are the type of women that men take serious. Nah, for sure. And there are the type of women that businesses and jobs and the world looks at with some sort of respect. And then there are those that we entertain from a, you're entertaining space. Yeah. So there's been a lot of chatter on the internet about the responsibility of artists and their messaging, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, what are your thoughts on that uh, in terms of, you know, the messaging that these artists, you know, are putting out there? I'm a firm believer in, especially with music, people are allowed to share whatever their journey, whatever their brain, their creativity is telling them to share. Mm -hmm. I just feel like um, from a space of responsibility, the same support, and I'm talking to the consumers, like I'm not one of them conspiracy theories that, oh, the, the man or the industry is, this is an industry plant, and no. Us as consumers of these products, we need to make sure as we support and entertain artists that are, you know, giving out that music and that, that brand from a lustful, worldly, fleshly space, there should be equal support for the artists that are conscious right. and disciplined with the content that they put out. Because life is all about balance. Yep. Everything is not gonna always be on the up and up right. and good. If you come from, like where I come from, low income household, you know, just seeing, you know, I grew up in the projects, so it's like, I can relate to the music that's talking about fucked up shit and yeah, killing one another and sure. drugs and all of that because I know it's real and it's going on. Right. It needs to be talked about because it's happening. Right. But I also know the other side of it where you could change your fucking life. You could save yourself a lot of headache by getting more in tune with self, accountable for your choices, being real that the way your life look is on you and your upbringing, breaking generational curses. Like there's equal value in both, if yeah. you ask me. Nah, for sure, for sure. Um, what would you say, uh, like, fulfills you, you know, these days, like, you know, you know, between your artistry, between just everything that you're doing? I mean, e even being a mom, like, what, what fulfills you these days? Like, if, when, what you asked me in the beginning, looking after myself. Like, I stay motivated and fulfilled by seeing about myself. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I mean, going into what bothers me, what, because all of us have emotions, we have feelings, right? In my e guide on management of emotions that's on my Instagram, it, I talk about how keeping emo an emotional journal, male or female, is important. Mm -hmm. So I, I stay on top of what keeps me fresh and new day to day. Mm -hmm. I stay on top of the things that bother me, the stuff that's showing up from my childhood. Mm -hmm. I see about these things before the world ever has to tell me, mm -hmm. hey, something is going on there. Mm -hmm. So when I wake up in the morning and before I go to bed at night, I'm seeing about me. I'm doing a, a self check, so to speak. And then everything about me that needs nurturing, I nurture that shit. Mm. My creative side from my music and my platform, my intellectual side, you know, the parts of me that's yearning for more information, I see about that, the physical, I'm exercising, the health-wise, diet, and understanding, you know, the information I know about the food industry and what's going on. Yeah, sure. It's a lot of shit I don't eat. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm seeing about myself health-wise. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to not put so much of this type of food. I'm going to stay away from the heavy salts and sugars and, you know, the red meats and the pork and all the fucking carbohydrates and things that are not good or reflective of me being every bit of what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. And then keeping a positive environment, like making sure I chose a man in my life that understands the value of family, self-care, honesty, integrity, leadership, uh, fairness, mm. balance, but also understanding that men and women are equal. Like that was important for me to find in a partner mm -hmm. and then making sure my environment is reflective of peace, but making sure that first and foremost, I bring the peace mm. Mm. to my children for and sure. to my man. Like I come with order yeah. and not order. Like I got to discipline you to get in order for me. I come with the responsibility and the understanding that even for my children, like my youngest daughter, she's 10 years old. I come to her from a space of I want to bring you peace. Mm. I want to parent you, but I want it to be positive. I want you to feel good mm. about having me as your mother. I want you to feel good about the conversations where, you know, they're uncomfortable. Mm. So for me, when I say bring peace, it's to my children, to my man, and to myself. I feel like if we get more into a self-check of am I a good person? Yeah. You know what I mean? Do I have certain boxes checked for myself? Yeah. Then I can attract and demand that shit from y'all. Yeah, no, that's real. That's real. Because I could say that, like, I feel like over the past year, I've probably been at this, like, point where like physically, emotionally, spiritually, like I feel like I'm at like the best place, you know what I'm saying, I've ever been. Right. And, and, and being in this space, it like really took like for me to be intentional yes. about, 
you know, like myself, about yes. my health, about, yes. you know, like just different energy that I, you know, bring into my life, different yep. people that I allow to, you know, bring energy, you know, to my life, things like that. So it's like being intentional about like all of those things. I, I never knew, you know, like when you would hear these health buffs and yep. whatever. It sounds cliche. Yeah, it sounds, it so, sounds cliche. so cliche. And I'm telling you, but then, I mean, like even something, and I might be getting too personal with this, but this mm -hmm. is something that I experienced like recently where like I've been on this eating clean thing, yeah. like, like, like way for probably about like nine months, 10 months now. Mm -hmm. And I just went like probably about a month, two, three weeks, like where I like kind of fell off. Yeah. And I started noticing my skin was yeah. Dry, started noticing like different stuff like my, my, my voice was changing yes. just just different just weird stuff where I was like bro because when you clean your body and I'm telling you this when I say clean even cleaning your mind and yeah. putting yourself in a better environment but the diet and food when you when you when that negative shit come back in when that unhealthy shit come back in it shows the fuck up yeah and this is how it's easy for us to see what's going on with other people because right. i'm knowing since you started working out and eating healthy you seeing certain stuff with probably your dogs or family members that like bro that's going on because he don't eat healthy or he don't work out or so he ain't seeing by himself. My partners call me a gym snob. You know what I'm saying? Because I e even like we was out one time and I was like, man, that fe she don't even look like she work out. Yep. Man. Like, I ain't, nah, man, I ain't about to deal with you that. You can like, tell. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to tell you something, especially for men, right? There is a thing within y'all and, you know, I don't know what you would call it, but there is something in men where you have to go get wrecked. You got to go work out, rather yeah. it's lifting weights, rather it's running, because there's a space where you must release that testosterone. Yeah. You must boost yourself from a, I am powerful, I am fit, yeah. I am a man. Like, you got to go get that. Yeah. So nah, for me, like, real. when I do, you know, therapy calls with men or one-on-one -on -one calls with men, I always ask, like, you know, what they diet like, mm -hmm. are you exercising? Yeah. Well, even when y'all going through relationship stuff, yeah. a lot of what would free your mind has to do with you sweating and going and getting active. Yeah. Changing how you look at you. Yeah. So then when you look at you different, you could be different to your relationship and to the type of women that you choose. Yeah, no, that's real. Because um, I know that like with what you're talking about, like with men and us needing a release, yep. like on one end and, and for the most part, most of us think it's fucking. Yep. Most of us think we need to bust a nut. Yep. You know what I'm saying? But then like you hear about people like who I've heard of like people talking about like is is it called like semen retention or yeah. whatever, like where like dudes are like hold back from actually releasing in that way. But then we still need a way to like release them endorphins and yes. you know all of that stuff. That's so like what you're sweating, talking about. the exercise, the working out, even there is and, and I'm sure you know this from going to the gym yourself. There is something in men that switches when you see your physique change. Yeah. And you ain't got to be trying to get real skinny or no shit yeah. like that. It's just getting fit. Yeah. Seeing your arms change, your chest yeah. change, nah, your legs, sure. your thighs, your stamina. Yeah. Knowing that even when it come down to sex, I could fuck different. Yeah. I could last different based on, you know, my body and what I'm doing with it. The other part of it is like I made a video and this was like two years ago talking to dudes. Right. And I was explaining how there are a lot of the niggas that get pussy, but they're not conquering any women, yeah. meaning like you laying down with females and you fucking the shit out of her, but she don't trust you while you in her. Mm. She don't trust you time you get out of her. She ain't for you while you in there with her mm. in your most vulnerable space as a man. Like it, it ain't, it ain't what you think it is. Huh. So you done slept with five or six women. None of them have real respect for you. None of them actually view you as a man. They'll call your ass lame in a second, cuss you out pull all your business out on the internet. If they have babies from you, keep your kids from you. Like men have to start being more accountable for the situations they're walking themselves into and what they're allowing yeah. in their environment. Yeah. They bring in chaos to themselves by dealing in spaces where like you said, they think they only need to release through a nut. But see, that's tough though, because as a man, like we pretty much program like to conquer, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, and so a lot of times we in these scenarios with these four, five different women that we smashing, cause like it is, I mean, we're programmed where, I mean, like to conquer, like something that I've, I was talking to uh, one of my partners about was like the pressure of a man, uh, the pressure that a man has, like when we just travel out of town. Yeah. Like if I go, if I go to LA for a couple of days, and, and I come back and I call one of my partners like, man, just got back from L.A. Damn, trip was dope, man. First thing he asking me. Boy, you got some pussy? You fuck something? Uh -huh. 
shit, you got you some pussy. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Hey, and, and if you didn't, it's, it's almost like, like, like what you was doing. Wah, wah, yeah. Wah. Like, what was you yep. doing? Like, nigga, what was you hitting me? But we need, y'all need more the culture we need as a people, more big homies that's on some real shit. Yeah. Everything ain't about getting a piece of pussy. Because right. the thing about it is, when you start doing the stuff you talking about, that shit comes to you and the women respect you. Yeah. My whole point is, like, in the video I was talking about, I was explaining to men, you can sleep with a bunch of women, but when you lay down with women that, I'm gonna stress again, they have no real respect for you, it's like you didn't even get no ass. Because, huh. watch this, your dogs will big up you for fucking a bitch and turn around and laugh at you when that same bitch clown you. After you got the pussy. Yeah. It, it, you, you see how in the same sentence, you, it ain't so ego boosting when that same bitch that you just told your dog you fucked and he dapped you up about it now she on the internet saying your dick look or this going on with this or this fuck nigga ain't even had no money or he ain't do this your dog sitting right like damn bro she tried you bro look how she damn they in the comments bro they clowning you (laughs) same nigga that boosted you to get that pussy you see what i'm saying it's it's like we need more big homies telling younger niggas like hey bro get in the gym change your diet yeah these bitches gonna be after you when they see that you are like reserved with yourself right. and i ain't saying you can't get no pussy i'm saying you attract a different type of pussy when you carry yourself a different for way sure. as a man for sure for sure yeah when you when you carry yourself with that confidence and that and that self-awareness i yep. think that's like the biggest yes. like thing that we've been talking about and kind of jumping back into is like that self-awareness of like of, of knowing like shit like i'm putting in this work so shit i'm 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 up here i'm yep. of this stature or i'm you know what I yep mean? it's 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 that that self-worth self-esteem i'm gonna tell you something else like you know and we don't talk about this enough it's yet another topic <laughs> we don't talk about enough but there is a lot of pillow talking going on with dudes because they don't have male role models or a brohood where they can speak to them about real shit yeah so they land up with women talking about their dealings with other women they land up with women going into all of their financial issues. And when I say land up with women, this, these is niggas, this not their wife. This, no. They just don't got no pocket where they can go to Big Bruh or my right. homie or yeah. a, a resource pool of men yeah. that we can discuss, hey bro, I'm fucked up right now. Y'all know where I could go get work or find this or be right. better with this. They going to women for everything. Yeah. Babe, you can give me $300. Baby, you can help him. I'm just fucked up. A nigga need to get back on his feet. Even for niggas in the street. Yeah. Like, bro, you got to have some male resources where y'all collectively, you know, coexist as men in a space of we have a conversation about how to be better. Exchange information, right, right. resources. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. niggas is laying up with women talking about things that you shouldn't be discussing with a woman, especially if this is not a woman you ain't laid claim to. Damn, did I go back to these uh, dudes like where you raised by your moms yep. and you just comfortable? We're telling a woman i have dudes that you know they trying to break that like they uncomfortable dealing with men because they never had men influence them in their upbringing when they daddy came around and tried to like say something they mama felt like don't nobody give a fuck what your daddy said yeah. I, you i take care of you he don't do shit yeah. and because he ain't buying shoes or putting in whatever monetary stuff she feels like he's invaluable like there's nothing he could give you so now you're a grown man, and when men are trying to give you advice, you damn near want to fight, shoot a nigga, right. kill, you yeah. get upset, you puffing your chest up, and a nigga telling you every bit of what's right to right. grow yourself as a man. Yeah, nah, ego is one of the most deadliest diseases. Yep. Like, I'll say that. But yeah. men teach men how to be aware of their ego. For sure. Then from there, the man will tame it once he does have a purpose, a family, a focus, a business, a real career, something he cares about. He will then tame his behavior centered around his ego, like willingly. It will yeah. be intentional from self. Yeah. Wow. Yo, can we get the ebooks as audio books? Yeah, I could do like, that. And you I, know, it's, 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 people have asked me that even for my book I wrote years ago. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's a workbook, it's a guide that you use, you work it into your life to, you know, just really bolster yourself up as an individual. And people, they're like, Dorsey, you should just. Do the audio book. I just want to listen to the shit. We need that. I'm telling you, like going on a walk or you know what I'm saying? We need that. Get you some Andre 3000 flutes behind it or something. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I fuck with that. Yo, but nah, I I, I definitely think that uh, the ebook, like with audio will, will be killer. I just dropped another one on my page and this one is to help you reprogram shift your paradigms okay. it's, that's it's, the 40 page yes it's okay. like 42 slides yeah. or 42 pages if you will and, and it's set up a certain way 
to penetrate the psyche. Mm -hmm. So it's a bunch of different pages of information that has to do with real life. Like mm -hmm. it's straight to the point. So there's shit in there on the seven different streams of income. Mm -hmm. There's shit in there on, you know, relationships. There's stuff in there on self-care. There's stuff in there on being aware of life, attachment styles, there's certain shit. And what it does is the idea is you get the ego, you read it twice a day mm -hmm. for 60 days straight. Mm -hmm. It's going to reprogram a lot of your beliefs and then it's also, it's going to touch you in a conditioning space where when you see this certain information consistently, you start to know it. When you start to know it, you will attract it. It's like when you buy a certain type of car mm -hmm. and then you start seeing a bunch of that type of car right, that you right, just right. bought. Yep, when yep. you program and you keep seeing this type of information, as you go out in life on your same frequency, you're now going to start attracting things that match with that information that you keep feeding yourself. Right. And the idea is you want to look at it ideally when you wake up in the morning before you go to sleep because human beings that's when we're at our most vulnerable yeah, yeah before we go to bed and when we wake up yeah no nah, for sure for sure that's that that's that uh well i think that guy napoleon hill um you like put that out there too in that think and grow rich book yes. where you like write down all your goals yep. like yeah no nah, but we sure. you know what when, when it's so crazy because in in 2023 when you say write down your goals it sounds so like i talked to so many people i got a notebook i wrote all this shit now we don't know how to write out a, a, a goal as a real intentional goal right. like that bitch have to be written out right first then you take it and you put it in a planner right. meaning you have to put steps mm -hmm. there needs to be a halfway mark mm -hmm. each step needs to have a date on it yeah. or a this needs to get done by yeah. or here is the schedule for me doing this it's like when you hear somebody say I want to buy a house right mm -hmm. and they write down by December 2024 I want to have purchased a home right. there is so many inner parts that you right. need to set dates right. for fixing your credit, finding a realtor, deciding what you could spend, going through a first time home buyers class or getting the money up to as a down payment, you know, deciding what what you what type of loan you want to go for, understanding interest rates and how to do the math with that. Getting your life in a place where you're disciplined with making payments. Like all of these things need to be set up as the S smaller steps yeah. to the bigger goal of yeah. purchasing the home. We don't do it like that. We just right now, right. I'm going to buy a house. Down what I want. Yeah, I'm trying nah. to save up 10000 Got to get them short-term, long-term goals. Yeah, build up to it. No, nah, for sure. Um, one of the slides on the 40-page, uh, uh, what is it on managing emotions? Mm -hmm. That's what it's based on? One no, of so the, 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 three, the three slide is management of emotions. Okay. The 42 page, it is about changing your mindset, shifting changing your, your paradigms. Mindset. So one one slide that um, that I that I saw that I was really uh, digging was the what your triggers mean, and that was something where like I, yeah. I think a lot of us don't even understand don't. what triggers are. We don't even know what they nope. are. Like so to even know like how it could affect you. So like that was interesting to me because it just opened my mind up to you know some different things. Most maybe. people don't even realize when they're triggered. They believe I am justifiably responding they think it's a response right. to something you said or did to me but nothing's actually happening to them it's just something in them was woke up and mm -hmm. if you get the ego it'll really break it down and it'll start helping you reprogram yourself the other thing is when we talk about triggers like for example i have a book club right mm -hmm. and in my book club there's a book we're reading right now that's on triggers mm -hmm. there is so much to understand about being triggered and then once you understand what triggers are and you understand your triggers you can start being a better person to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk about doing better, you got to understand what makes you feel some type of way in order for you to be better. Mm -hmm. Cause of course, a lot of us, we don't realize our environment is set up to trigger us. Like we got shit and people right, around us right. that trigger us. How could I ever get focused as a man or a woman if my everyday life is set up to make me feel some type of way? Mm -hmm. Is it possible to be attracted to things that 100%. are your triggers? Yep. Yep, and it has to do with what's familiar in your subconscious mind. So a lot of us don't realize from our upbringing, things that we were exposed to, right? From, it could be trauma, it could be good shit, bad shit. Mm -hmm. It is familiar to your subconscious mind because I've seen this before. Yeah. When you have seen something before, you've been through it, it makes you more comfortable with it, even if it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This is why, you know, people that go through, you know, abuse as a child it ends up repeating in their adult life mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form, because there is an attraction to it when you don't see about it. Mm -hmm. When you grow up in a household and you've dealt with trigger warning, rape or molestation or something like that, a lot of times it comes up in hypersexual or you being the molester or the person violating somebody else. Like it repeats itself because you're familiar with it. When we talk about money, 
because everybody ain't, ain't got deep traumas like that. But being financially fucked mentally is a deep trauma. Hmm. So when you used to post shit, you grow up in low income households, you never seen anybody make a way. It becomes very difficult to be attracted to the steps necessary to make a way for yourself because you've never seen anybody look like you do it. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's like that old saying when they used to say, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Mm -hmm. Like pick your own. Like what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like right. I, I don't got the tools. I ain't never seen this shit being done. And everything that have to do with being hood and broke shit, I fuck with it. Huh. So you go out in life and you, you, you're a full grown man or woman, you got all the skills, you're capable of doing better, but it feel better to chill and smoke with them. Right. It feel better to just, you know, go down there and get the welfare, get the food stamps, keep my income below a certain amount to stay on the housing program, never elevate because this over here is what I'm comfortable with. Right, right. Yeah, it's something called know. toxic charity. And if you don't understand it, you should really go look up what it is. But it's the concept that you could get help from a space where it cripples you. Mm. Like you, you similar to governmental programs, yeah. that shit designed to keep your ass at a certain fucking level. Right. And so people, their goals are set to keep my income below this, mm -hmm. to keep my tax returns looking like this, mm -hmm. to not go to, you don't even realize it, but you're purposely not living your full potential hmm. to keep these perks. Yeah. Huh. Going through the motions, like yeah. just basically like keeping people at a certain level and just just letting them stay there and, and them being content with that. Yep, psychologically, this is part of the reason why a lot of us as women, we pick the bad boys. Hmm. Outside of it being exciting and shit, there's a part of it where I don't ever have to grow up and be a mature woman. Because as long as I'm dealing with the nigga that's always fucking up, guess what? I could justify my fuck ups. Hmm. You get what I can cheat because yeah. I can you cheated on me more than I cheated on you. Right, right. Well, right. you ain't so do I this and you ain't do back. this. You go get a grown person. You got to be grown. Yeah. You go get somebody with boundaries. You got to have certain boundaries. Mm -hmm. You go get a nigga that know how to manage himself and handle himself. You have to now be a woman. Yeah. You go get a masculine man. You got to be a feminine woman. And see, when you don't know how to do that, I ain't fucking with that masculine right. shit. Give me old boy that's the, the fucking hobosexual, the one that need a place to stay and I can control him by him staying with me. He ain't going nowhere. Cause the minute you act in a way that I don't like, I'm gonna get bring my car, bring me them keys, get your shit and get out. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah. it, it makes it where I can stay this version of me. Yeah, nah, that's real. <laughs> keep, keep that upper hand, stay in control. Yeah, like, and it, it's, it's crazy. I've done plenty of one-on-ones where women tell me that. Like they're like, love, I know I got a problem and I already know what you're gonna say, but let me just explain it. And they go through a situation where they say, I date down on purpose. These are staff, these are police officers. Mm -hmm. These are women that have careers, women that work for the government, women that have um, trucking businesses, women that own salons. I purposely go get dudes that you could tell they're every bit of what you talk about on the internet, a product of a single mother household where he ain't got no car, he ain't got no sense of himself mm -hmm. as a man. But I get them because I get to boss them around. Like they, they stick around longer. They do what I tell them to do. It feels comfortable to me. They ain't going nowhere. Yeah. So my childhood abandonment issues, I ain't got to deal with them because he ain't going nowhere. You try to leave, I'm gonna just bring up all the shit I do for you. That's or cool. I go get them niggas fresh out of prison that don't got their basics together right, right. and I could build with you and you owe me. So every time it do feel like we growing apart or you look like you about to fuck off with another woman, I'm going to bring up how I helped your ass when you first got out and your family wasn't there for you. Don't take your ass nowhere, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, on the random tip, have you ever or would you ever uh, hold a nigga down that's in, that's in prison? I, so, so knowing what I know now, no. I will be a man's <laughs> friend right. coming off of a situation like that. I will be a resource to them. Yeah. But there is this warped reality that you could take somebody, and this goes for men and women that's in a survival season, mm -hmm. and make them love you properly when they're still trying to figure out how to survive. Mm -hmm. So when you go get somebody that, like, I'm doing a prison bid, or I'm fresh out of, you know, doing some time, I don't got no car, I don't got no place to stay, I don't have anything to give you, you provide or you help the person, excuse me, get all this shit. And then you're looking for them to choose you in the end, but a person don't really know what they're attracted to until they get to that version of their self that they wanna be. So I might not even be what you want while I'm like nurturing you through your survival season as a man, through yeah. getting your basics together. This is why a lot of men, once they get their shit together, they don't even like that kind of woman that they was just allowing to help them. Oh yeah. And niggas need to be more real about that. That's right. Like I'm fucked up, I take whatever help from whoever 
I'll fuck a fat bitch that I ain't even attracted to fat hoes right now. Like, you know, no disrespect to big women, but just showing like this, this ain't even what this man owns, but he'll do it with you and entertain it right now to use you. And when he get himself together, genuinely, you ain't his type. Yeah. Same for the, the women that are boss bitches, they independent. It's like a nigga feel like this what I want because I'm fucked up right now. Right. When he get himself together, he don't want your loud talking bossy ass. <laughs> right. It don't matter if you big or small. Right. He looking for a submissive woman. Right. And now you feel like you got used and done wrong, but you ain't supposed to be trying to make nobody who trying to survive, love you and build with you. They got to get to a space where they live in, they basics together, and then y'all build together and they decide if they want to fuck you hmm. or fuck with you. Yeah, yeah, not real game, real shit. Um, tell me about the new project that you got coming out. Ooh, so I got a tape that's dropping January 5th, and this, this that one. So it's the, the tape behind the breakup. So okay. it's called the Afterthought. Okay. So it's like, if you understand the cycle of relationships, like you, you know, through separation, the breakup helped get you through that. Mm -hmm. But now after you break up with somebody and you ain't fucking with them no more, and you, you know what I'm saying, you off them, right? There's these afterthoughts, there's this, shit that goes on in our psyche yeah. where you're reflecting back not just on that relationship but where you got some of your ways and your reasons for why you was attracted to the bullshit so it's mm. it's therapy it's right. one of the ones yeah nah that's what's up and is it gonna be in the same vein of like of, of like a storytelling like type of project yeah like, it's the the songs are lined up that same sort of way yeah um it's not gonna have the talking in between, mm -hmm. so to speak, like the breakup did, yeah. but you gonna hear that bitch flow. <laughs> like you gonna, it's, it's gonna speak to you. And again, it got much accountability in there cause that's, that's what I'm for. Yeah. I'm for us being real, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I can only give from my, even from my creative space, I can only give that real. Right. Like I can't promote and push people to do shit from a space where I don't give you the back reasons if I am rapping about some of the shit that is fleshly or that may seem like bullshit, I'm going to give you the story behind where that shit came from yeah. so you can understand the full extent of the game. Yeah. And what made you uh, come up with the idea to do like these themed albums? You know what I'm saying? Uh, my, my brand, like if you understand like how my page is organized, yeah. the people are very much involved. Yeah. So like when I'm doing the music, they like, man, you, that, this, this video you made, you need to make a song about that. Right, right, right. So it stemmed from, you know, the, the, the supporters of my brand, the fans telling me like, we want to hear this shit in your music because your music already raw, you can rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you are artists, but there's this other side of you we love too that we don't want to not hear that in the music either. Yeah. So. Right. And so um, any features, any producers, anybody that like you were excited to work with on this project? So um, I got Pasa, um, the artist that was with Lucci yeah, and yeah. TIG and you know, that whole camp, mm -hmm. um, Thank It's a Game. Um, he's on a, a couple songs. I got some, some real dope features from some females that are um, up and coming artists. So I have um, Anesha Janae, and then I also have another young lady by the name of Kitty, and she can sing. Okay. So she put her thing down on Right. On, right. on, a, on a track on there. That's what's up. And you're going to bless us with some visuals? Uh, yeah, yeah. Time? So all December, because my tape dropped January 5th, mm -hmm. all the month of December, just expect them visuals to come. And okay. you know my shit go hard. Because yeah. the content, the, the shit behind the music is what I'm going to call it. The, yeah. the messages in the music, like when the visuals hit, Shit gonna match yeah, up. Yeah, nah, I can imagine. I mean, the, the, the storytelling is yep. gonna have to, I know And it's, it's real. Matter. The thing about it is, it's real shit. It's the stuff, I don't give a fuck if you in the streets. You could be thugged the fuck out. You could be church out. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing relationship shit. Yeah. So no matter what, you gonna listen to my shit and you gonna relate to some shit. Male, female, young, old, regardless of your lifestyle. This what's going on amongst people in social circles and relationships. Yeah, word, word. And, um... You, uh, what, like, what else you working on? What else you got, you know? So my, I, my second book is coming in its own relationship. So okay. that's been long anticipated. That's gonna finish up the um, mid part of next year. Okay. And then there is, and, and I hate to say it, but I'm gonna say it, there is some TV show talk. Mm. So you can look to see me. And I, the reason why I say I hate to say it is because the, there are some different ideas that I'm finalizing okay. in regards to um, the, Thing behind the the show, but you'll see me on TV soon. Word, um, there's up. some mainstream radio action going on, so there's big things in this upcoming year. Word, that's what's up. That's what's up. And um, you got any uh, you got any words, any shout outs, you know, that you want to give your fans? Anything before we get about it? Keep keep working on self. 
keep staying true to self, keep having the uncomfortable conversations that, you know, we may not have been supported in having during our upbringing. Be willing to be that one to break generational curses. And in order to, to really break generational curses, you got to understand what the curses are. So take a look at your family. Be willing to be real with yourself about what's wrong with that motherfucker, along with what's right. And move forward with the intent to continue the shit that's right and confront the shit that ain't. Wow. Nah, that's what's up. And love, I just want to say, like I said to you before we even started the interview, like, it's a pleasure to meet you. I've been Absolutely. wanting to meet you since, you know, you uh, came and blessed the porch the first time around. I was mad that I didn't uh, get a chance to purchase the book of affirmations that you had put out that you were talking about back then in that interview. Um, I wasn't able to cop that, but like that was something that like really stood out to me uh, that you were talking about in that interview. But no, I just love the message, the messaging that you, you know, giving across and, and, and the uncomfortable conversations and, you know, things that we need to have. So I just want to salute you and, you know what I mean? Just, just show you some love. And For sure. And listen, I appreciate y'all having me back. Yeah. I fuck with, I fuck with the platform and, you know, anybody that's a genuine supporter of the content, yeah. take me out of it. But just the shit I talk about, anybody that fuck with that, I fuck with them. Yeah. Cause that's what need to circulate. Even if it wasn't me saying it, I talk about the shit that's necessary. Yeah, nah, real shit. That's what's up. That's what's up. Nah, I appreciate you pulling up on For me. sure. Alright, bet. Sick of the shit when I ain't around, you got a lot to say. If you gon' tell the fucking story, tell it the right way. Sick of the shit when I ain't around, you got a lot to say.